In this video, we're going to go through a thermochemistry problem where we're going to be calculating the heat, the work, and also the change in internal energy for the heating of a gas, in this case, ethane, right, C2H6. So overall, the problem is calculate the energy required to change the temperature of one kilogram of C2H6 from 25 degrees Celsius to 73.4 degrees Celsius in a rigid vessel. Calculate the energy required for the same temperature change at constant pressure in a flexible vessel. Calculate the change in internal energy for each process. And then you're also given the, the heat capacity at constant volume for, for ethane, which is 44.60 joules per Kelvin per mole. Now, um, you know, there's a few big key points really to look at right here is that for the first part of the problem, right, we're going to be calculating it in a rigid vessel, right? Rigid vessel, that should tell us that we're going to be doing it at constant volume. Right? And so this is going to be a constant volume problem. Another way to approach it is thinking about it as a bomb calorimetry problem. Right? So a bomb calorimeter, you're going to you know, do a reaction or do some type of process in there where um, you know, you're going to be measuring uh, um, you know, something, but it's going to be at constant volume in that case. And so you know, let's first write out and, and, and do a few short calculations right, to get our baseline going. So first things first, right? we have the mass of C2H6 right, of, the, of the ethane. So the math, mass of the ethane sorry, is 1.00 kilograms, right? So a good thing for us to do is first convert that into grams, right? So that's going to be a thousand grams, right? Because one kilogram is a thousand grams. Um, another thing, right, is we can determine what the molecular weight is. So the molecular weight for ethane is 30.08 grams per mole. So we should probably want to calculate the number of moles first, right? So moles is going to be always an N. And so in that case, all it is just simply mass divided by the molecular weight. So we have the mass in this case, which is 1,000 grams times 1 mole over 30.08 grams, right? Grams cancel out. We end up only with moles. And so what we get is that the molecular weight of, or sorry, the, the number of moles of ethane that we have is 33.24 moles. So another thing we can look at and that we can calculate, right, is that we have uh, the temperatures, right? So we have our initial temperature. So temperature initial is 25.0 degrees Celsius, right? So if we convert that into Kelvin, right, we just simply add 273 Kelvin. So what we get is 298 Kelvin in this case. The final temperature is 73.4 degrees Celsius. And so what we get in this instance is 346.4 Kelvin. And so we can go ahead and just simply make our lives easier and calculate the temperature change right now. So the temperature change is simply going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature, which is 346.4 Kelvin minus 298 Kelvin. And so that comes out to being 48.4 Kelvin. Right, so we have uh, that information right there. Now, another piece of information that we have is the heat capacity at constant volume. Right, so we have CV is going to be equal to forty-four point six zero joules per kelvin per mole. Now, another thing that's going to be important for the constant pressure uh, part of the calculation, right, is that we're going to need to determine what the heat capacity is at constant pressure. Right, so we're going to need to determine CP. Now, in an ideal gas situation, CP is equal to CV plus R, right? And so we can just simply make that assumption right now that ethane in this regard is gonna act like an ideal gas. So we'll just simply add CV plus R right here. So that's simply going to be 44.60 joules per Kelvin per mole plus 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole, right? And that comes out to being 52.91, right? So if we just use a little bit of sig figs there. Uh, joules per Kelvin per mole, right? So that's going to be our CP in this case. So now we've kind of established everything that we have. And so now we can start tackling these problems. So the first one, right, is going to be the constant volume problem, right, because we're in a rigid container. So there's a few things that we're already going to know off the bat, right? So work in a thermodynamic sense, right, is going to be negative P delta V, right? That's, th that's the equation uh, um, in general that you would use in these cases, right? So P, P delta V work. So one important thing, right, in a constant volume, delta V is going to be equal to zero. So that means that work is automatically going to be equal to zero in a constant volume problem, right? In a rigid vessel problem, in a bomb calorimetry problem. So we don't have to worry about um, that component in calculating these, right? So if you see constant volume and you're expected to calculate work, um, right, you can just go ahead straight from the bat, right, and give work equal to zero in that case. Now Q, right, heat is going to be equal to 
the number of moles times the heat capacity at constant volume, right, CV, times delta T. So if we take that right there, right, and all we have to do is just simply plug and chug. So that's just going to be 33.24 moles times 44.60 joules per Kelvin per mole. Right, that's going to be the, the value that we were given. And then we just simply plug in the, the delta T, right, the change in temperature that we have, which is 48.4 Kelvin is equal to 71,753 joules, right? And so you can kind of round that around if you wanted to, right? You can do 71,800 joules, um, right? I think the more appropriate thing based off of uh, the number of sig figs, right, that, that would be the case here, right? So this should probably be, you know, essentially 71,800 joules in this case. And that's going to be our Q. Now, um, you know, a very important part here is that uh, delta E, right, the, the change in internal energy is going to always be Q plus W. And so because W is equal to zero, it's just simply going to be equal to Q. And that's always going to be the case in a constant volume problem, right? Delta E is always going to be equal to Q. It's always going to be equal to the heat. So in this case right here, right, delta E is basically, right, 71,800 joules. Um, and that's the constant volume problem, right? We got the heat, we got the work, we got the uh, change in internal energy. Now, if we go and we do the same problem, but now we're at constant pressure, right? What that is going to do is it is going to um, allow us to, to calculate work this time, right? So you're at constant pressure, the volume is going to have to change, right? Because the P's uh, um, going to stay exactly the same. So, you know, the work equation is work is equal to negative P delta V. And we can go through the whole process if we wanted to of calculating what the pressure is, right? Using the ideal gas, uh, um, um, you know, law and everything like that. But we don't have to do that whole process, right? Because we can just simply derive one where all it is just simply dependent upon the temperature, right? Because if we look at you know, the, the ideal gas law, right? So if we have P delta V, that's going to have to equal, you know, the change in NRT. Oh. The change in NRT. So uh, we have this right here. And so because the temperature is changing, but the number of moles in the, in the ideal gas constant state stay the same, right? We can just simply write this out, write this out as NR delta T in this case right here. So, right, so P delta V is going to be equal to NR delta T. And so if we rearrange all of that, to solve for delta V, right, we have delta V is going to be equal to N R delta T over P. So if we go back to our work equation and we plug that in for, for delta V, right, we're going to have negative P times N R delta T over P, right? And so the pressures are going to cancel out. So all we have is negative N R delta T, right? And that's going to give us the work. So all we have to do now is just simply plug in the values that we have in these cases. So we have negative 33.24 moles times 8.314 joules per Kelvin per mole times 48.4 Kelvin, right? So moles cancel, Kelvins cancel. And so if we solve this right here, what we'll get is negative 13,300 and 80 joules, right? And so we can also, again, I guess kind of like round that up, right? Because we, are, we should really only have three sig figs, so this should be negative 13,400 joules in this case, right? So that's what we have for work. Now Q in this case right here, right, is going to be now equal to the number of moles times the heat capacity at constant pressure, right? So this is going to be the CP value times the change in temperature, right? And so we've already calculated the, the heat capacity at constant pressure, right? That's CV plus R. Um, and so we can just simply plug and chug again, right? So it's going to be 33.24 moles times um, 52.91 joules per Kelvin per mole times the change in temperature, which is 48.4 Kelvin. And so we go through all of that. And so what we will get is 85,122 joules, which if we just do the whole rounding thing, should come out to being 85,100 joules.
right? So if we're going to for sig figs in this case right here, right? So we have 85,100 joules. So we have W, we have Q, right? So now delta E is equal to Q plus W. So what we get is 85,100 joules plus negative 13,300, <clears throat> um, or sorry, 13,400, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm using the sig figs, right? 13,400 joules. And so you take that and you add them together, right? So let me just do that real quick, 85,100, because I didn't have this out, 13,400. So what we get is 71,700 joules, right? which is pretty close to what we had gotten in the, the, the constant volume problem, right? Um, and that makes sense, right? Because delta E is a state function. So it doesn't matter if you're, if you're doing whatever process at constant volume or at constant pressure. Um, in both of those cases, right, you should get at the same delta E value. The only thing that really should change is going to be the heat and the work in each one of those uh, situations. Um, and so, right, 71,700, 71,800, it's pretty much the same, right? There was a fair amount of rounding that was happening. And so things, you know, kind of got a wash there, um, you know, but they're basically the same value. Um, but yeah, and so that's how you solve these two problems, right? So constant volume work is going to always be equal to zero. And you would then solve for the heat using, um, you know, the uh, heat capacity at constant volume in a constant pressure scenario, right? You're going to have work is going to be equal to negative P delta V. And if there's a change in temperature or a change in moles, right, you can just simply rework that equation to, to figure out the work in that case. And then um, the heat, right, in that case is then going to be using the, the heat capacity at constant pressure um, in that scenario. And then you can add those all up and you can get those values.